Analytics can play a huge part of making a game successful because it's just so hard to know from the beginning how people are going to experience different parts of your game. So in this video, we'll have a look at enabling Unity Analytics and how you can use stuff like custom events, funnels and remote settings to properly monitor your game and make changes after it goes live. On the screen now, you should see all the things that we're going to cover in this video. Feel free to skip to any one of them. Also, there's a lot of terminology when it comes to analytics. I'll have a link to a glossary in the description. All right, let's get started. Let's begin by enabling Unity Analytics. This will open up the services window. Here we can go under analytics and let's press the toggle here to enable it. We then click continue and here we need to press play in the editor to validate the connection with analytics servers. After it says analytics enabled, we can then stop playing. And congrats, we've actually now just set up Unity Analytics. Now as it says here, it might take Unity some hours to populate the data, but we can go to the dashboard right away. And here is the analytics dashboard. As you can see, it currently says pending data processing. And of course, we don't want to wait for this. So inspired by all of the great TV cooks, I've gone ahead and cheated a little bit. If we go to the top and click operate, you can see all of your cloud service enabled projects. Here you will also see a demo project. If we click this, we can essentially see what our project is going to look like. Under the overview tab, we can see stuff like our active players, the amount of sessions this week, user retention, as well as generated revenue. And we can also split this up into nice graphs so we can see a development over time. If you want to explore even more data, we can go into the data explorer. And here we can see a breakdown of a whole bunch of events. We can also split our data into multiple segments. As you can see here, there are a bunch of pre-generated segments. Some of these are location based, some of them are based on demographics or target platforms and we can actually add segments ourselves. We'll have a look at that later. If we go and do live stream, we can see how our game is doing in real time and we can actually see our active users plotted on a map. So this is really cool. Now if we go back to our game, there's of course no data available yet, but as soon as it finished processing, it should actually already track active players, sessions, retention and all that. However, there's of course a bunch of things that you might want to track which is specific to your game. Now inside of Unity, I've created this test scene called One Button. In here, I have a canvas with a UI button and the button says, press me. Now let's imagine that I wanted to track people pressing on this button. To do that, I would go to the button and add a new component. I would search for analytics and select the analytics tracker. Now here, I could create a new event name. In my case, that would be button press. And we've now just defined a custom event. We can then choose how to trigger this event. You can trigger it when starting a level, when enabling or disabling an object, or we could choose external. This means that you can trigger the event from other scripts. In our case, we want to trigger it whenever we press the button. So I'm going to add an on-click event on our button. I'm going to drag in our analytics tracker script. I'm then going to go under function, go under the analytics tracker and click on trigger event. Now every time we click this button, it will notify our analytics tracker, which will trigger a button press event. And we can actually see this happening in real time. If we open up our dashboard and go under live stream, we can already see that we have one user login and one new user. If we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see our top custom events. If we then go into Unity and hit play, we can try clicking on the button a few times. I'm just gonna click it three times. And if we now go back to our dashboard, and we might need to wait a bit for it to update, we can hopefully see that we have a button press event and that it has occurred three times. Now, if for some reason Unity is still setting up your analytics and this isn't triggering, we can always see it working if we go under our services, and here under the validator, we can see our three button presses, as well as an exact time for triggering the event. Now that's pretty cool, but there's actually much more we can do with custom events. If I open up my next test scene here, you can see that I have two buttons, a red one and a green one. And let's say we wanted to make a game where we keep track of how many people have pressed the red button versus the green one. In this case, we could of course go ahead and create two separate events, but both events would be a button press. So a better way to do this would be using parameters. If we go onto our canvas here and select our red button, I'm going to switch to the inspector here. We can see that I have an analytics tracker here with the button press and the trigger set to external, but we can also add a parameter. You can have parameters specific to different game objects, or you could have static parameters, which are simply a single value. In our case, the name of our parameter should be color and the value of a parameter should be red. Now we can do the same thing for our green button. Here we add a parameter, we change the parameter to static, set the name to color and the value to green. Now we can switch into our services and hit clear on our validator. We then hit play and we can try pressing the red button say twice and the green button once. Now we should see our custom events here update to six, 
but we can't see parameters in live view. Instead, we'll have to go into the data explorer. Here we could add a custom event. And here we would input the custom event of button press. For the segment, we could use all current users. And as the parameter, we could then input color. But as you can see, we'll have to wait for this to update. So for now, we can just check that everything is working in our validator. Here we can see that indeed we have three button presses, two of them with the color red and one of them with the color green. Awesome. When talking about analytics in games, one of the most important things is trying to figure out where and why your player is having a tough time. And a good way to measure this is using funnels. Funnels allow us to take custom events and use them to track how our player is progressing through the game. So we have a simple scene with a button for loading the next level. And as you can see, I have three different levels, each with a button. And then the last one is just a blank finish screen. When pressing the button, I'm calling two different things on our level loader object. First of all, I'm triggering an event on our analytics tracker and the event name of course corresponds to our given level so this is level one for level two this says level two and of course for level three it says level three then I call a very simple method on the level loader. All this is doing is just loading the next scene. So if we were to try and hit play now and click on load next level a few times until we get to the finish level, we can see that it calls our different events. So first off, we finish level one, we then finish level two, and finally we finish level three. And we can see this under our custom events as well. Don't worry about the numbers here. I've been trying this out a few times. So now what this allows us to do is go up to our funnel analyzer and add a new funnel using these events. We could name this funnel level progression. As the description, we could say, how many levels does the player complete? And then we can add different steps. So the first step here would be level one. The second step would be level two. And the final funnel step would be level three. We would then save this, hit okay. And now we've created our first funnel. As always with analytics, we have to wait a bit until this works. But if we look under the demo app and go to the funnel analyzer, we can see that it's set up one for us. This works in the exact same way. It has three levels and it shows the number of people who've completed each stage. So you can see for this game, there's a pretty big fall off from level two to level three. So it would probably be a good idea to nerf the difficulty here a bit. Now, previously we talked about how you can filter by different segments. We do the same thing here. Let's try and filter by say platform. And here we can see there's a total drop off from level two to level three for iOS users. So maybe there's something going on there that should be fixed. We can also add custom segments. If we go to our own analytics, go into the segment builder, we can see a list of all the different segments added by default. You can always hit edit if you want to change something about them, or we can add a new segment. Say we wanted to focus on users who are playing a lot. We could create a segment called hardcore fans. And the description would be users playing a lot. Then as the event, we could say that the number of sessions a user had in the last week is, and then we could say at least 10. So only the really hardcore users. To create this segment, we simply hit create. And as always, we'll have to wait a bit for the data to update. Now, the final thing that I want to show you is not so much an analytics tool as it's a really great patch tool. I'm of course talking about remote settings. Now remote settings allow you to change values in your game after deploying. This is really great to build into your game because after deploying your analytics might show that your game is too hard. Well, if you created a remote setting for difficulty, you could simply go in here and change it right away. To start using remote settings, we first have to change our configuration to development. This will allow us to use remote settings in the editor and all builds set as development builds. We then go into Unity and here's of course a simple test scene for remote settings. All we have is a text element on an empty canvas and it currently just says remote setting. Now we need to download a very small package from the Unity asset store. Let's go to the asset store and search for remote settings. Let's navigate to Unity Analytics remote settings and hit download and import. I'll of course have a link in the description. Let's hit import once again. And let's now try and change the value of our text using a remote setting. So let's hit add component and let's search for remote settings. Here we can add a new parameter. We want to change our text, so I'll reference our text object. Under the field here, I'm going to go into our text component and I'm going to change the text variable. And now we need to specify a remote setting key. Now we haven't created this yet, so let's go into our browser. Let's create a new key. Let's call this key game quality. We can change the type here to say a string. And the default value when we release the game is going to be bad. We then add this. You can see now it says edit it here. We can change that by hitting sync. 
Let's hit sync once more. And Unity has now pushed this new value to the server. Now we can go into Unity and most people go right to the setting key here and see there are currently no options. That's because we actually have to go window, Unity analytics, remote settings. And here we have to insert our secret project key. To get this key, hit the look up the key button. And I'm gonna blur this page, but if I scroll down here, you should see a field called project secret key. Simply copy this, paste it into the field in the editor and hit next. And you should now see all of the remote settings that you've configured on your dashboard. We can see the key game quality of type string and that it currently has a value of bad. Let's now close this window. And if we then go to our remote settings, we can now select the game quality key. If we hit play, our text will automatically update to say bad. We can then deploy our game to all kinds of systems and cross our fingers that our reviews are all right. And when we then have a look at our analytics and find out that, whoa, something is wrong here. All we need to do is go to our dashboard, edit our game quality and change it to good. If we save that, sync it and hit sync again, we should see that the next time we play our game, the result is good. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also, Unity Pro allows you to do a lot more stuff with services. So if you find yourself often using these, I definitely recommend you check it out. I'll have a link to it down in the description. Also, let me know if there are any other services you want me to take a look at, such as collaboration or ads. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in August and a special thanks to Hans Hoftun, Jesper Mikkelsen, Thomas Worley, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Nati, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Husam Kaza, Judaman, Aaron, Robert Bund, and Peter Locke. If your name's not on the list, I will make sure to include it in videos later this month and the next month as well. You guys rock!